So in this latest video, we're going to be looking at some of those time-saving opportunities that are available to electricians. Gaz, obviously, it's a grind making a living as an electrician. It is. And we want to make life as easy as we can. So what are we going to be looking at today? We're going to be looking at the earthing nut. Yeah. So now these are replacing the earth ring, yep. um, often called the banjo on yep. site, and the lock nut when we're connecting things like steel wire armoured glands, and we're connecting them to, say, metallic enclosures. Absolutely. Now this isn't a new product, it's no. been around for a little while, but it's always nice to revisit things, isn't it? And just be reminded of how hard your life could be yeah. if we didn't have things like this in place. So what's uh, the benefit of the earthing nut, Gaz? Because we've got these raised edges, mm -hmm. and when we tighten it onto a metallic enclosure, it's yep. actually going to grip, bite, and make a mark into the paintwork, yep. and hopefully get down to the metallic enclosure. Absolutely. Whereas obviously with the earthing ring, there's a big debate, isn't mm -hmm. there, whether we have to start scraping off the paint in order to make the best possible electrical connection. Yep. And we're also required to drill a hole then for the fly lead, which yep. I believe we are not going to have to do on that one. No, so around the edge of the earthing nut, we've got several uh, threaded holes, uh, one of which is going to be used in order to make sure that that grips onto uh, the armoured gland really okay. nice and tight, yep. and the other one we're going to use for our earth connection. So that provides us with two things. It provides us with a simple means of earthing this, which gives us a good earth connection onto both the steel wire armouring okay, yep. of the armoured cable, and also onto the metallic enclosure if that's what we're using. So, what do we need to do now, guys? I think we need to take these and actually fit both of them and compare the ease of actual installation. Fantastic, let's do it. Okay then, Joe, so we're ready to see how easy it is to fit this earthing nut then. Absolutely. Now, there's just a couple of things you want to take note of before you start installing this, okay? We want to make sure that we can access the terminals on uh, this earthing nut. We want to be able to access these holes. Now, I like to start off with the grub screw already partially in because otherwise it can be quite tricky to try and uh, get that in there afterwards so I like to have that in there to begin with. I'm going to remove the uh, screw that will hold the earthing lug onto there to make sure that uh, that can go into either of the terminals that it's easiest to access once we've got started. So whenever I install any kind of armoured cable gland I always like to keep the lock nut still on the inside and I like to spin the gland body into it. Now the reason for that is if you're trying to turn the lock nut on the inside, whatever kind it is, there's not a lot of room for motion inside there with your spanner or your grips or whatever you're using. So I like to rotate the uh, external part here, the gland body, and you'll notice again because it's got those teeth in there, if you look here, I can actually start to spin that and that earthing nut is pretty much going to stay still. So you can see that once it starts to bite, it's just not moving at all, which is a really, really good thing. And now that's in there, I can tighten this up. The other issue, Joe, if you were spinning the actual nut on the inside, you could find that the grub screw is on the back of it and therefore you couldn't tighten it off either. Absolutely, yeah, which again is something just to bear in mind. So that is now absolutely locked in there really nice and tight. So that's a really good start to that. Wow, Joe, that seemed very, very easy to fit, and I can see it's nicely secured into place. However, we've now got to attach the fly lead. Would yeah. For us? So again, this couldn't be simpler. All we've got to do is just get the fly lead into any one of the accessible threaded holes on the edge of the earthing nut there. So I'll just get that lined up, and then get my posi screwdriver in there, and then it's just simply a matter of driving that screw into the hole. And you can see there now, that is earthed, simple as that. What's stopping the actual earthing nut itself from spinning in the future? So once we've got this in and we're quite happy and that's tightened up, all we've got to do is just get this little grub screw and just tighten that up. And what that's going to do is that's going to lock the earthing nut against the gland body and it's going to stop that from coming undone. So that's now in there, that's reasonably tight and that's not going to come undone at all now. So the, the gland itself now is ready and prepared for the steel wire armour cable to be entered. Absolutely, we could pop that in just as we would. A normal gland that we'd made off with the earthing ring and the lock nut. So uh, there's no competition there. That was very quick. So quick. So then guys, what are you going to be installing now? So I'm going for the more traditional gland which comprises of both the earthing ring and the lock nut. Of course, I've now got to prepare, before we start, I've even got to prepare the hole for the earthing ring. So let's okay. do that first. If I just temporarily slip this into place. Good. I've got a lot more kit than you had. Yeah, you've got a, a couple of drills here at a shop, uh, some more spanners, uh, a lock nut spanner. Yeah, it's, it's looking a bit busier here. Yeah, that's why I got this one. Okay, so let's move some of this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole to start with. I'm wearing a set of goggles and drill a pilot hole and then I'll follow it on with my actual size of hole. There we 
you go. So there's your pilot hold up. And then in with the hold. Okay. Excellent. So we've got the hole drill now ready for the earthing. Ring. Okay, so I break my body down so I get to my gland body. And we're going to put my earthing ring and gland body together. And then we're locking that on the inside. And we're going to locate those. I'm also going to loosely fit my nut and bolt so my earthing ring doesn't move away during the tightening up process and then take it out again to facilitate the fly lead. So There's nothing worse than your earthing ring spinning oh, around when you're trying to tighten up your armoured gland. It's incredible, it just drives it? you crazy. So here we go. So we're going to lock these off now. So I'll take my lock nut spanner on the inside. There we go. And we'll tighten this one off. A little bit more awkward than yours already. Yeah. I don't like using grips. No, I don't like using grips either. It tends to match the brass of the uh, cable gland up, doesn't it? It does. Okay, so I'm in this position now. So I'm going to undo my fly lead connection, which we've already made up. Very good. So I'll get that installed on there as well. Again, a little bit fiddly. Yours wasn't that straightforward, but obviously it was a little quicker than this. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to tighten that up. Oh, dropped it in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, very good. So mine's not as easy as yours. Yeah, we didn't away. plan that, did we? <laughs> no. Okay, so I'll fix that one back out. Go. And of course, it's it's a brass nut, so you, you can't get it out using a magnetic, using a magnetic screwdriver. screwdriver or anything. You certainly can't. Have you, have you lost your washer now as well, guys? <laughs> <laughs> So straight away, this is obviously way more difficult. Yeah. I'm sure people are saying at home it's the... The, the problem exists between the floor and the uh, and the spanner. Is that what they're saying at the moment? Okay, try again. So. There we go. Do, do. There we go. So we've got the washer on. That's going on now. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's it. You got it. Now. You got it now. Happy days. And of course, we've got a little star washer on there as well, just to hold the uh, nut in place. We'll get that terminated. Now, if you've ever worked with Gary or you know Gary, you'll know that he is absolutely rapid. Uh, he doesn't hang about on anything. Okay. So this is not a slow job that Gary's done here. Apart so from we've me got that. that. We've got Obviously. that into pretty much the same position that we were in with our earthing nut now and uh, I think it's fair to say that when you look at the time taken I'm a bit slower than Gary when I work at it, and Gary's a bit quicker than me but I think that earthing nut went on quite a bit quicker Gaz would you agree with that? Totally agree and I've still got the debate haven't we should we have removed the paint where the earthing ring is sitting yeah there's a big debate am I relying on just this connected to this and the hole it goes into yeah should I have maybe fitted it on the inside and removed the paint all those debates yep. so this was really about how quick it was to fit apart from my dropping obviously the, Absolutely. the actual nut itself you know, yeah. and I'm pretty rapid as you said yours look considerably easier yeah I think even if you took out the time fishing around for the washer there this still would have taken quite a bit longer you take into account the drilling uh, and all of that it's it's a, a longer job to install so one last thing then Joe let's prove that the earthing nut and the gland itself has an earth connection between the actual gland body and the earth terminal before the fly lead is connected yeah let's do that so if I just connect on to the gland body on the outside of the consumer unit there and then on the inside I connect to the earth bar you can see that we're getting a very very low earth read in there so we're getting a continuity read of 0 0.01 0 0.02 and that's before the fly lead has been connected we've proved that yep. the actual gland itself that cutting mechanism where it gripped onto the box has actually eaten through the paint and is actually connected to the yeah. bright metal work and of course this would become even more critical if we were to be installing uh, this earthing nut into a metal enclosure that didn't have a dedicated earth terminal because then we would be relying very much on that connection making sure that it was hitting the metal work and connecting that to earth. So Joe, you asked the question, yep. earthing nuts, good idea? I think they're absolutely brilliant, yeah. No, they're super speedy. Uh, it reduces the need for drilling, reduces the physical number of tools that you need to do the job with. Absolutely excellent idea. 
I think they're a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that I'll be going with those. Yeah. They get the the Joe and Gaz seal of approval. 